welcome to last lecture of module 7 that is week 7 which is on introduction to involute gear tooth correction and this is the sixth and last lecture of this module. The title of this lecture is tooth tip interference avoidance and contact ratio in involute internal gearing. In this lecture, first I shall uh, give the definition of tip interference in internal involute gearing, then tip interference during engagement ring gear is driver, tip interference during disengagement ring gear is driver, avoidance of tip interference in internal gearing by tooth tip truncation which is shorter addendum avoidance of tip interference in internal gearing by tooth correction. Tip interference in harmonic drives with involute tooth gear set and finally, the contact ratio verification. Now, first uh, let me explain what is tooth tip interference. In internal gearing, when it is used for epicyclic gearing, normally there you will find sun, pinion and the internal tooth ring gear. Now, if we think of the size, if size of the ring gear is 100, then other two are less than 50, less than 50 size. That means, if the ring gear is of 100 teeth, then the pinion, uh, sun pinion and planets, they will have teeth number less than 50, this is very common. Okay. In case of just external gear drive, uh, sorry, internal gear drive with only say fixed ratio, where the pinion is driving the internal gear for an example inside an uh, drum it is fixed in that case also there will be at least tooth difference more than 10 or even more because we want the ratio we want the transmission ratio there so number of teeth in the external tooth gear that is the driving pinion you can say will be less than much less than the internal gear at least 10 to the difference will be there or even more. But there are some other gear drive which is actually epicyclic diet not fixed axis, but arrangement is different and it is very difficult to consider those as an epicyclic drive. One example is two gear drive where the transmission ratio will be more if the teeth difference is less. Highest transmission ratio is possible with teeth difference 1. We shall learn in the next section about those. But it is not possible to make the teeth difference 1 in case of involute internal gearing. Okay. So, if we consider 20 degree stub teeth, say let us consider uh, uh, 20 degree involute stub teeth standard stub teeth means as i told earlier the addendum factor will be 0 0.8 standard tooth addendum factor is 1 standard stub teeth is 0 0.8 internal gearing usually standard stub tooth are used if not corrected with 20 degree involute stub tooth then if we consider the teeth number of gear is zg 
and uh, t the number of pinion say minus z p that usually should be greater than 8 otherwise there will be tip interference. What it is that if we consider this figure, say let us consider the um, ring gear is driver. Okay. So, it is driving the pinion which is the most uh, cases in case of such two gear epicyclic drive. In that case, if we draw the geometry and if we consider the pitch point here, this is the pitch point P, okay. then uh, let us consider the intersection of two X, um, which is called tip circle diameter or addendum circle diameter of pinion and gear is given by j. Intersection of the tip circles of the gear and pinion is designated by j. Okay. And now, if we consider that T p is the tooth tip corner here and T g is the tooth tip corner here. Now, when they are coming in being engaged, then T p dash during the time of engagement or you can say this is it is, it is called engage they are they are engaging mode. So, that T p dash should cross the T dash g or or in other words T dash p should cross j before T dash g would come there. I repeat again, let us consider the internal gear drive where the gear is driving the pinion and direction is shown, then tooth tip corner is of the gear is designated by T g and it is of the pinion is designated by T p. Now, <coughs> they are coming and they will reach at pitch point. Then with reference to this pitch point, if we consider when they are coming in, they the T dash P should cross the point of intersection of addendum gears which is J earlier than T dash G. Otherwise, what will happen? You may find that if this is the teeth of external gear and the, this the pinion. Suppose, here is the j, this is the tip circle radius and this is the tip circle radius, here was the j, but they have come together at that point. This has not crossed, this pinion has not crossed earlier that point, then they will interfere which is called tip interference which is called tip interference. This occur in internal gearing, in involute internal gearing if the design is not proper and there is for the standard stub teeth or even uh, with full depth this number, this difference should be minimum. As I have specified here, it is 8. If the pressure angle increases, this number will reduce if the pressure angle decreases, this number will increase. So, 8 is the value, it actually it is 7 point something for which this when this T dash P will reach at J at the same time T dash G also which reach at that point. Suppose, it is 7.8, then if you make it 8, then in that case T dash P T dash P will cross that point just a little before T dash G and there will be no interference. Okay. So, we need to verify such interference by theoretically how to do it that we will learn here.
So, the condition is that if you look into this ge geometry that with reference to the pitch point then theta p what is theta p? Theta p is the point of intersection the point of j from the pitch point the spread of the j and t g with respect to the center of the pinion that means you can clearly see what is theta p that theta p must be greater than z g by z p into theta g what is theta g theta g again the angle with respect to the gears j to p up to pitch point j to no sorry uh, this is just the angle of tip rotation respective tip rotations. So, this is a little confusing to visualize this, but, but think over that if theta p is greater than then theta g z p by theta g this means that actual position the left hand side is designating the actual position of the t dash p actual position of this is with respect to p. So, that you have to visualize that you have to understand clearly this angular conditions. Okay? Now, the we can calculate this theta g this is geometric clearly this geometric point of j which is if we consider this triangle that O g j into b dash uh, sorry o p then r a g square plus a square minus r a p square divided by twice a r g minus beta g that means whole angle theta g plus beta g is this much minus beta g must be equal to theta g. Okay? And similarly we can calculate the theta p also you can just compare with, with this geometry and this value will become like this, where the subscript p and g refer to the pinion in gear respectively and a is the center distance between gear and pinion. Now, beta g say this angle, this angle here it is given what is beta g that can be found out by involute alpha minus involute alpha T g here it is not shown alpha T g as similarly beta p will be involute alpha T p minus involute uh, alpha. This involumetry we learned at the beginning also during the gear tooth correction we have learned a little more. So, you have to be careful about calculating this. Okay. So, now that means from the geometry of the gears we can easily calculate this to calculate r a g we should consider the standard pitch circle and then addendum we have to add two addendum with the chain pitch circle diameter. Now, addendum it might be 0 0.8 in commonly with in case of internal gear if you truncate it it will be less or even it can be more that you have to accurately calculate you have to put it there and center distance if it is not corrected gear then easily you can calculate what is the center distance there. So, other values can then be calculated 
with no difficulties. Where alpha T p and alpha T g the pressure angle at pinion and gear tooth tips respectively and um, these are derived as say z g minus 2 a f g in the denominator 2 a f g a f g is the addendum factor and alpha 0 alpha 0 or alpha o subscript o is the standard pressure angle say if we, we have considered the 20 degree um, in volute gears then we have to take this is 20 degree, whether it is corrected or not corrected we, for this calculation we have to consider the what is the standard angle we have considered and what we have considered the addendum factors with respect to the standard pitch circle. Okay. And A F G and A F P are uh, the addendum factors for the um, ratio of addendum heights. This means that addendum height can be given by addendum factors into module. So, it will be A F G into module or A F P into module in case of gear and pinion respectively. Now, <coughs> Uh, then question is that what will happen during suppose there is no interference during engagement the ring gear is driver okay. will be there any interference during disengagement say suppose it has entered inside the tooth pockets and you trying to go out will be there interference the simple answer is that usually it will not happen because if there is a little bit uh, backlash then you will find it will never happen it will never happen okay but still it can be verified with the same geometry here i have presented this one so, this is procedure is same you can calculate all these angles and then finally, we this is the condition condition at 8 that should be satisfied where here this another angle r gamma and r p are the angular arc thickness of gear tooth pinion tooth at their respective pitch circle. This R uh, gamma g and gamma p at pitch circle for standard gears this would be equal okay ideally this would be equal but usually gamma g will be slightly less than gamma p because to avoid the say jamming there will be backlash that r g minus R p can be considered as the backlash there okay. R p will be less. So, that due to this backlash automatically this tip interference will be avoided provided it has not tip interference during the engagement okay. it is automatic, but still we can consider everything and we can calculate in this way. Now, next question is that if the pinion is driver then what will happen if the pinions become driver then the case is opposite during the engagement so this will be the engagement you can say and the arrow of rotation which is showing the direction of rotation it will be just opposite so it will be in that case it will be more critical during the disengagement disengagement of pinion from the gear it will be more critical. So, for example, we have used a very uh, big pinion to drive a ring gear due to some reason it might be we do not need fixed axis. In that case we need to verify the disengagement interference 
considering the pinion as the driver that we should remember. Okay. Now, how to avoid the two, two tip interference? As I told, if they are interfering, simply trim that. That is the first way, that is the easy way. But while you are trimming this teeth, then you may find the contact ratio may not be sufficient. Although, in case of internal gears, the contact ratio will be higher than of same teeth number in external gear. For an example, if you take 100 teeth gear and 80 teeth pinion, say for external drive, external tooth gear drive, what will be the contract ratio for the same amount of addendum and addendum? It will be higher in case of internal gear if you take 80 teeth pinion and 80 teeth ring, a 100 teeth ring gear with same proportion of tooth height. That you should remember, but still while we are truncating definitely each and every case. Suppose after we give small truncation and we will check whether it is um, TPI interference is avoided or not. Okay. Then each and every case we need to verify where the contact ratio is satisfactory. It should be at least 1.4 as case of power drive. Now, what is done? One exercise is done that we have truncated the teeth say 14 and half they are definitely the number of teeth would be more. Okay. So, first let us verify the case of 20 degree teeth 20 degree involute in 20 degree stub teeth that means with 0.8 addendum we found that tooth difference would be 8. But what we have done we have truncated the tooth say and we have shifted the center uh, like that mostly truncated this is this example is for truncated the teeth then it is very peculiar although peculiar and not maybe may not be feasible that we have kept the addendum factor of gears is 1 whereas pinion only 0.2 somehow we managed to have the contract ratio is 1.28 tooth difference is 5 okay then this deep interference is just avoided, just avoided, but these are not feasible design. But we have shown if we agree with this 1.28 very slow speed it might be possible keep you keep the contract ratio 1.28 and addendum factor of pinion keep 0.2 no correction is here. Then we can have Z g is equal to 100 and tooth reference is 5 that means 95 teeth it is possible. If we go to 14 and half in standard case much higher difference is much higher it is I think 10 or 11 tooth difference would be there. But still we can come down to 7 keeping both addendum factor of gears and addendum factor of pinion 0.48 where contract ratio somehow you can get only 1.27 and these right side angles are given to how the how they are crossing this as you can see this one is 45.1 and this is 41.9 and this ratio is 45.05 just it is less okay now we are increasing the pressure angle with 22 and half which is used for internal gearing in precision drive in aircraft internal gearing sometimes this angle pressure angle is used it is not standard for common industrial application. There we have kept the addendum factor 0 0.78, 0 0.78 so contract ratio has improved to 1.4 and we find that it is possible it is possible. So, perhaps uh, 22 and half of this design is acceptable okay. and with 30 degree obviously with tooth difference only 4 we can make even the addendum factor 1 above 0.8 above standard stub teeth and contract ratio is 1.47 perhaps with stub teeth it will come 
1.4 or even a little higher and in that case this is avoided. This means that we, we can have such a drive with say 30 degree it is better with truth difference only 4, but by no means we can reduce the teeth number less than that. So, at least it should be 4, at least it should be 4 okay, with only by truncation, but if the correction is introduced probably the situation will improve. So, let us see that now we have modified center distance and in that case this is the repetition how to calculate the tooth th thickness there and uh, that uh, circular piece will be expressed by this one now and then with CD modifications with tooth corrections then these relations this is shown earlier also this can be introduced there and we can uh, you can step by step this is the procedure of gear tooth correction internal gear tooth correction which is shown earlier that is repeated here and and uh, we can calculate finally the uh, center distance ac between the pinion cutter and the ring gear being cut for an offset xg can be expressed as because this we need to find out the tooth thickness after the cut okay and uh, these are the relations for new uh, I mean uh, the cutter pitch circle radius working pitch circle radius r dash, r dash p c and working pitch circle radius of ring gear is r dash g which is given by r z z g by z p c in which z p c is the teeth number of pinion cutter. Okay. And then finally, rearranging 21, we find that center distance of Carter AC will be this and we, if the AC we fixed that is the center distance which can be fixed depending on the which can be found from the depending on how much correction we have given amount of corrections from there we find and then we find the alpha C alpha c is the c is the working pressure angle at the gear cutting condition and from there we find out again the thickness at the pitch circle and again we calculate the rg and rp with that respect and then with such corrections if we introduce the corrections then what we find for 14 and half tooth difference we have kept 7 the same a by a 0 this correction amount of uh, that that is showing that how much correction has been introduced 1.007 and we are getting contact ratio 1.45 avoiding the tooth interference avoiding the tooth interference. So, what is there that with such corrections with corrections means if we change the CD there is no meaning keeping the teeth same. In this case the it is being reduced or if we go for minus correction it will be it can be also increased center distance, but here new center distance is a 0 old center distance was a no sorry new center distance is a 0 old center distance is a b a that means a 0 is less than a and amount of correction x g by m by module it is 0.025 in case of 20 degree also not to 5 here the in case of 20 degree it is improved to 1.376 for 22.5 it is 1.56 and for 30 it is 1.470. So, in case of 30 we need not change the center distance because it is not required as shown in table 1 which I we discussed earlier. So, 
you can see that how much improvement can be done with introducing gear tooth correction. So, in case we have to go for less number of teeth with pressure angle 14 not normally used for internal gearing say 20 and 20 and half then we can introduce the center distance correction tooth modifications and we can have improved result in case of 30 degree which is not required. Now, another interesting matter is that in the next lecture the module 8 we will learn about the harmonic drives. Okay. In that harmonic drives the pinion is on thin rim and that is deformed elliptically, elliptically and rotates inside the ring gear. Okay. Now, there the tooth difference is kept too. Obviously, correction is introduced if we go for involute gear there uh, other other profiles are also used, but in case of involute profile still two teeth difference is made with 30 degree. Okay. Now, if we would like to verify the teeth interference there then we have to consider the different conditions of the pinion also which is shown in this figure, but the procedure will remain same only geometry will become a little more complicated, but that also can be calculated. There are few references which you can study and we, you can find out. Okay. So, this is simply just by the equation normal equations the conditions are shown. Okay. And other parameters are calculated following the geometry and then it is fortunate that the standard stuff to uh, TIF interference is avoided even with uh, tooth difference of 2 and 20 degree involute gear in case of harmonic drive. Okay. We are fortunate that this there it is essential that keep uh, tooth difference should be at least 2 then of course, it can be kept 4, but most bene beneficial will be if we use the two teeth difference and which is very common applications. It is due to the flexion of flex spline as the flex spline is being flexed. So, it is you can say forced uh, deflected and it helps in disengagement as well as in engagement. Okay. But as I told each and every case when we are truncating or we are introducing the gear tooth correction center distance modification we should verify the contact ratio. As we have already discussed this earlier uh, with reference to the figure of the internal gears the contact ratio can be given by T 1 P by P T 2 summation of that. That means, if we consider this distance from here to here plus here to here, one is engagement during engagement and other is disengagement that divided by base pitch which is fixed whenever the pressure angle is chosen it will not change P B will not change even if we go for corrections, but this T 1 P P T 2 will change. So, that we need to calculate carefully and the formula what we use here what we you can see this formula is written in form of if we know the addendum circle that is the blank on which uh, this gear or pinion has cut R A P R um, A G that can be easily calculated R B G and R P P as the base circle once the tooth is uh, um, pressure angle is finalized then we can easily calculate and then alpha tan alpha and tan 
uh, then alpha component is coming over there. This alpha is the working pressure angle that we need to calculate on the basis of center distance where they have met. Say cor corrections is one part to thickness etcetera one part, but if you know the center distance finally, if you know these dimensions easily you can calculate the what will be the contract ratio. So, that need to calculate each and every time while we are trying to verify the interference. So, alpha is working and now alpha 0 is the standard pressure angle and they are equal in this case as there is no change in center distance. This I have uh, I have mentioned if, if there is no center distance then they will be same. If there is a even if on a corrected gear if the center distance is not changed then working pressure angle has to be the same as the standard pressure angle that you should remember. Say for example, good example is the plus minus correction the thickness are varying, but this angle is not varying. If we increase the angle or decrease the angle only in that case the working pressure angle will vary that to we calculate very carefully. So, thank you for listening this part this is the end of, end of um, week 6 lectures where I have given a fundamental idea of gear tooth corrections only on state tooth spar gear not helical spar gear. With helical if the teeth are made helical this will be more complicated in case of bevel gear it is further complicated when they are corrected. In case of bevel gear normally specified by the manufacturer, but in case of um, we will uh, helical gear it is although it is difficult still it can be calculated it is very tedious to calculate the amount of corrections to thickness etcetera etcetera however it is possible now another uh, i i would like to tell you at this stage uh, up to the week 5 lectures that is mostly on the general purpose gear and a gear box design. That should not be difficult for any student whether it is he is a third year bachelor student or maybe first year post graduate student it should not be difficult. But a gear to the corrections and the next which is a special gearing that might be a little difficult for the students. But, uh, here one thing I, I can tell you that in this learning process to give the overall idea of the gear design, I have introduced this correction part and the new gears also special gears in the next week. But uh, and, and, and uh, the assignment in that assignment we will learn how to correction. Uh, inter the correction to three interference etcetera etcetera but if we think of the final examinations definitely no difficult questions will be there from week 7 and week 8 lectures no difficult questions okay that you uh, btec students whether you are btec or mtech students you need not worry about this complications and tedious calculations it will be very very simple you should only understand what are these ok. So, thank you very much next we will go for week 8 lectures.